I don't give my husband the black card for what he did or give him carte blanche for the the infidelity that took place in our marriage but also I understand it I own the part that I played in it because I wasn't free uh, I wasn't a free spirit I wasn't I didn't embrace my curves I didn't embrace who I was I didn't really know who I was really I just didn't I just felt like you know I'm Tony Mitchell's wife and that's who I was I was always Mitch's wife and then Tony would always call me mommy wife I was always mommy wife to everybody mommy wife that was always my screen name on things mommy wife so when I had gotten enough 2001 my dad passed and that is when I had gotten enough and I had said no more I'm not going to deal with any more infidelity I'm not going to deal with any of those things anymore. and so um that's when I start positioning myself to start losing the weight. Because, yes, after I had the gastric bypass, I lost 100 pounds. But my weight loss just halted. I didn't lose anything else. So I, I always stayed around 250. And I never went below that 250. My point was never to cut on the waterworks, but it just is what it is. Anyway, so, okay, Rose Love just posted on my wall. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. So, anyway, I just didn't know who I was anymore because I felt like, you know, a lot of the infidelity that, that took place in my marriage, I felt like it was that, you know, I was the burden to bear because the women that my husband would cheat on me were women that were heavier than me. So, here I go back and I go and I get this gastric bypass. I drop 100 pounds and my husband is still cheating, but he would cheat on me with bitches that were like four or 500 pounds. I didn't understand that for the life of me. Excuse me. I didn't understand it. And I don't want to say bitches, but, you know, because I guess it, it fell out of my mouth, so it just is what it is. You know, so he would cheat on me with women that were, wow, bigger than me when I had my surgery even. And for the life of me, I could not understand it. I couldn't understand it. And so, you know, it was after my dad died that I realized that, you know, I need to start living for me because my father and my husband were very, very close. And my father just adored him. And he was like another son to my dad. And so, you know, and I was daddy's baby, so I always wanted, to, you know, to impress my father. And, you know, and me and my father were very, very close. And so, you know, getting a divorce or anything like that was never something that I ever contemplated while my dad was living. Because I know that it would hurt my father because my dad loved my husband so much. Both my parents did. So I shielded a lot of the, the pain and a lot of the things that I was going through. I shielded that from my parents because I didn't want them to look at him in a particular kind of way. I didn't want them to see him other than, you know, son-in-law and, you know, we go fishing and we get on the boat and we go, you know, out in, you know, the lakes and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I lived a very, very good life. I've always lived a good life. Um, my family has never really struggled financially, so I don't know... I don't know that life. I'm sorry, I don't know it. I'm not going to come on here and say, act like Jennifer and say that she never seen a food stamp and shit like that because I have seen a food stamp after I had Anthony. That was when my cousins were like, well, girl, you can get you some food stamps and whoop de whoop de whoop. I take my stupid ass down there knowing that my motherfucking ass didn't qualify. But hey, you know, my cousin them told me, well, you know what? Tell them you don't know who the father is. All this old type of twist. And boom, I got caught up. You know, I got caught up. I ended up getting a misdemeanor out of the deal because I, I, I applied for something that I truly did not qualify for. I know this is all besides the point, but I'm going to bring it back around. Okay. 
So, anyway, needless to say, family, my life has been something. And I believe that you have to be put to a test to be a testimony, to give one. You have to have endured a lot in your life to sit and to talk to people about certain things. If you've never been through nothing, how the hell somebody's going to sit and listen to you talk about something when even if you have gone through something, you're shielding it away and you're holding so much of that pain on the inside and you're not releasing it to heal, then guess what? You're fake and a phony in some cases, and the truth is not in you. I'm not going to live that life for me anymore. Right now, in my life right now, I have no parents. My parents are deceased. Um, I have a husband. I do. That loves me a great deal. Tony loves me a great deal. And if I wanted that life back, that life is there for me to have if I wanted that back. I have a man in my life, I do. And he's ready to be whatever I want him to be. If I want him to be my husband, he'll be that. He's even to the point to where he don't give a damn if I become a bigamist. He don't care if we can go down there to the justice of peace and go ahead on and redo this shit in Las Vegas and come back as his wife he wants all of that. I have that option as well. Um, and so, I live a very spoiled life. I do. Um, after my parents passed on, they left me comfortable to be able to do the things that I want to do and to be able to support my children the way that I do. Um, to be able to buy the things that I buy. To go to places that I go. Um... So, I'm okay. You, you know, I'm okay. But internally, sometimes I struggle. Sometimes I really struggle because... Because, you know, it's like... As a mother, you always... Well, not all mothers. Because just because you have a pussy and you bear a child does not make you a mother. It does not. Let me be crystal clear about that shit, okay? But, uh, you know, there's times when I do things and I say things. And, you know, I mean, I'm only human and it's like, you know, am I, am I doing the right thing? Am I saying the right things? Or, you know, I second guess myself sometimes, you know, when it comes down to my children. The rest of this shit I don't give a fuck about. I really, really don't. I don't give a fuck about whether or not somebody dig me, like me, adore me, want to fuck me, or whatever. I really don't give a fuck about that. Because I have so much, so much to be thankful for in my life right now that I truly don't give a damn. I don't. And I no longer live my, live my life in prey. I'm not prey to anyone. And that's another thing I want to speak on for this moment. See my baby is barking. She wants to come in there, but I don't want. Let me go get my baby because she wants. To come, on. come on, mama. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. See, you want to play. Mommy don't want to play with you. I don't want to play with you. Come on. begin I just lost my train of thought <laughs> I just lost my train of thought um but anyway family I just you know I guess I'm just going through a plethora of emotions because I just been sitting here and I was watching you guys this um video responses and things and 
And that young lady just struck a chord in me. She just made me feel a particular kind of way. And I just began to think. And I, I just hung up with Jody a few minutes ago. And I was talking about different things. Are you going to jump down? Let me see you jump down. You bad. Because apparently you was wanting to do that yesterday. So you bad. Let's see. Tony cut your hair. I didn't like the way she cut my baby's hair. She gave her a bath and cut her hair in her face. Anyway, back to the back to the situation at hand because this girl is on her own thing. She's doing her own thing right now. Um. So, ah, she actually jumped. You actually jumped out of mommy's bed. All this time, man, I never knew she could jump out of the bed. Come here. Where you go? Egypt. Hold on, guys. Let me let her out of the room. Cause I don't I damn sure don't want you to pee in my room. Go find brother. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I know I'm taking you guys all over the place right now. This is the shit that motherfuckers want to tend to believe that I'm bipolar, and which I'm not. I think everybody have a little bit of this in them a little bit. They just don't want to admit it. And so if I'm a little bit of this, then that's so be it. I accept that bitch too. It is what the fuck it is, right? But I think everybody has a little bit of cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. I think everybody has a little bit of it. But no, I don't take I don't take any psychotropic meds for any type of type of schizophrenia or anything like that. No. As much shit as I tell you guys, don't you know by now I've been done put that shit out in the universe. This is my motherfucking schizophrenia shit right the Excuse me. You didn't see that. Wow. I can't believe I just did that. Anyway, I did it. So fuck it. Let's move right along. So anyway, family, I say all that to say, you know, at this point in time in my life, I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. And if I don't ever get a, a star on the Hollywood on the Hollywood uh, Boulevard on the Walk of Fame, I'm cool with that. If I don't never get the Oscar that I wanted so many years back, you know, when I was on my grind, I've always wanted to be an actress. Um, and, and, and still to this day, I still find that to be a dream of mine. And I feel like it's something that, you know, that it's coming. I feel like that is that is part of my bucket list. That is that that is still who I am. But I don't live that every day. This is my every day. Made down, raggedy, toe the fuck up, hair twisted to the left. You know, this is just me. I haven't on any makeup or cosmetics. I none of that. This is just me right now. Teeth brushed though. I ain't got no panties on. I hit a little peppermint soap so I'm fresh. This is just me. This is, hey, I, love, it or, love it or leave it. That's it, you know. And when I'm reading you guys' comments about my Essence Festival weekend, let me say this. Yes, I went by myself. I did. And, you know, I, I, it wasn't until the end that I ended up going by myself. In the beginning, I was not. But, you know, Ken could not get away from his job. And so he had some projects coming up that he could not step away from. So he could not, <clears throat> he couldn't, you know, it's like, okay, either you going down there on bourbon or you come back here and you go down there to manpower trying to find you another motherfucking job. So at that point in time, it's like, look, check this out. I'm going to need you to keep that address over there. So, no, I suggest you go ahead on and you handle that with, right there with the man. I got this over here. Now, I've been to Essence Music Festival. That was my ninth festival, okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not new booty anymore. In the beginning, did it, did it make me nervous? It did. 
The very first time I went by myself, I had two one-night stands, ladies. Two of them. Not something that I'm um, proud of, but I wear, I wear the badge on my arm like, you know, shit, that's wisdom for me. Because, like I said once before, I'm no longer prey. I'm no longer prey. In the beginning, I was prey. I was striving so hard to get on. And when you're striving to get on, a lot of times you accept shit that you just should not. You know, last night I was watching um, the basketball, the, the, not the basketball, wise, the hip hop, whatever. And um, Kenny doesn't have direct TV. I do. So, of course, it's blackout. So, you know, everybody that knows that has uh, um, direct TV, we ain't getting no motherfucking uh, VH1 and BT and none of that shit. Y'all got one sex seat. That's what you got, baby. Because ain't no motherfucking BET and shit jumping off on this motherfucker right chunk. So, I watched it last night because I missed it on Monday because that was my day of travel. So, I missed it. So, I watched it last night at Ken's and, you know, and I clearly understand that young lady saying that she don't want to go back to the strip club. I've never been a stripper, so I don't know nothing about that life. Don't know nothing about it. But being a woman that was in... Hollywood and was doing you know the cast and call thing it is a beast when I tell you that it is not a game down in them streets down there in Hollywood and in LA it is not a game and you will get swept up in the game if you're not smart and if you're not strong and I say that to my ladies that are trying to be models trying to be actresses and all that stuff and trying to get in on this entertainment business, baby, it's a beast, okay? And the same way old boy talked to her is the way a lot of those cats down there talk to the chicks down there. Because it's like, okay, either you gonna do this to get on or you ain't gonna, or you ain't on. But what we're gonna do? You know? And, <clears throat> you know, so I've, I've done and lived a lot of that. You know? Um, did I have a few one night stands? I did. Um, not very many though, not very many. But I, I had it. it don't matter. You, she, she, bitch, you still you been there and done that. Um, I had, I don't know, one, maybe, maybe two, if that, you know. But again, you know, I've never been one to drink, and I didn't indulge into narcotics, you know, street narcotics and stuff. I've, I've never I've never been a pill popper and shit like that so none of that should be, you know amuse me and I think that you have to have an addictive gene you know to just be you know caught up in a lot of the shit like that and I don't I, I, I clearly believe I don't have the addictive gene yes I, I have a cannabis card I smoke my marijuana I'm not gonna even lie to you I do that but I'm legal too you understand what I'm saying I have medical conditions and I'm not making excuses for it. It just is what the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? But hey, guess what? You know, I got my documents. You understand what I'm saying? And But when I was younger, I'm glad that I did not indulge because I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready mentally. I was not ready, you know, uh, physically in all those type of things to endure a lot of that type of stuff. And... um. You know, I got swept up in the game a few times, but not to the point where, you know, I was selling my body and my soul and all that kind of shit. No, I, no, I, mm -mm. no, 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 I ain't never did none of that shit. I had, a, I went to an Interscope party and I had got slips and things. It was after BET Awards um, one year and, uh, you know, um, this guy slipped me something in the apple martini and I woke up in his G-Wagon and I'm like, bitch, what's going on, you know? And he was blowing his marijuana in my face and stuff. And, you know, and that was a wake-up call for me. I would never forget it. And since then, I vowed that I would never take a drink from a man from his hand. Um, if it's not coming from the bartender or the waitress, cocktail chick, I'm not taking it from you. Because I don't know what the fuck you done put in there. And I say that unto my ladies that watch me every day. Don't take a drink from a man's hand. That is a cardinal sin. Don't ever do that. If you have to sit your drink down, chalk that drink up as, okay, I don't want that drink anymore. Because you will be slipped something, ladies. 
I've been I've been a victim to that as well. You don't want to be that chick. You don't want to be that girl. It's not good. It's not fun. It's rather scary. And I say all this to you guys is because I don't just be blowing shit out of my ass. I'm not just biting at the wind and just saying some dumb shit on YouTube. It's not even about that for me. There's going to be a time when my daughter is going to be old enough and she's going to be able to receive the information that I give to you guys and she will be able to receive it well. And she will be able to learn from the things that I convey to you guys. There's going to be a time when she's going to, because all my videos, I have them on external drives. I have them in my safe deposit box. When my kids are of age, when God takes me away from here, they can put it in there and watch my shit from one. Okay, family, this is February 13th. Whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. You know what I mean? That's just, th th this is what I plan on doing with mine. Everybody got their own thing that they plan on doing with their YouTube. But that's what I plan on doing to, with mine. And just so happened, they hit me up with, hey, guess what? We really enjoy your videos. We would like you to become part of our partnership uh, program. Wow, I didn't even know you guys even come out and scout. I didn't know any of that. So I accepted that. And then now to know that they actually compensate me. For doing stuff that I find so easy to do. They compensate me to come on here and to share my life and my world to somebody that probably needs these pearls today. For somebody that's probably, you know, straddling the fence on some things and just need to just need the know-how. Just need the the get up and go or need the drive or whatever it is that I'm able to feed to you guys. I'll be that chick. I'll raise my hand. I will raise my hand. I'll be the guinea pig. No problem. You know, there's so many women out here want to try so many different things and they want to do so many different things, but they, you know, my family's going to think I'm this or somebody's going to think I'm that. I'll raise my hand. I will do it. Because one day my daughter is going to want to know, well, what lipo do? Or what, you know, this and that do? Or how to make hot water cornbread? Or whatever the case, I'll raise my hand. So, you know, um, when people, when people look at me, I know people see so much confidence and I do exude a lot of confidence to do what I do and to travel abroad a lot of times by myself. I know now that it's starting to be a little bit more difficult to do by myself as I used to because now I'm becoming a little bit more popular. And it's like now wherever I go, people, I mean, people knew my face, you know, back then too, because I did a lot of little, little things. Yes, it was local, so hell, of course, if you're in Detroit, shit, you know who the fuck I was. But I bet you saw BET when we was on there doing our thing, you know what I mean? But still, that, you know, that gave me a little bit of a get down here in California, but not in New York City. You know what I'm saying? I was always just a local chick that a lot of people knew my face and... Oh, yeah, we know her. Who you with? You Okay, y'all, come on through. You know, that type of thing. He gave me those type of things.